Now let's get more on the war in Ukraine and cyber warfare in particular. Ross Buer of the cybersecurity firm, firm Attack IQ is joining me now. He's vice president for EMEA in the Asia Pacific and Japan. Ross, great to get your insight on this. How large are our vulnerabilities? How wide are the gaps in our cybersecurity? Well, thanks, uh, Kaylee. Look, the, the, we've been at cyber war now for some time. Obviously, this has raised the profile in the public domain. But the, um, the amount of uh, vulnerabilities, there's about 20,000 new vulnerabilities announced a year. And so the, the systems that we're now running are very complex. We're moving to the cloud. We're putting more data online. So let's talk about what organizations can do. What kind of investment does it take to, as, as Joe was alluding to, harden your digital defenses, to lock your digital doors? Yeah, so the first thing is organizations need to identify their key assets. They need to make sure that access control is strong around those. Joe mentioned um, what's called two-factor authentication, where you have more than just a password. Uh, that's, that's important as well. And then making sure that their employees are trained they have adequate controls and they're testing those controls, testing those defences to making sure that they find the gaps before the uh, organised criminals do. And then let's talk about as well the actors, because obviously a lot of the focus right now is on Russia, the potential for them to be executing cyber attacks, not just in Ukraine, but across borders here in the U.S. Have we actually seen that being borne out in reality or are we still just talking about hypotheticals here? We, we see it every day, and there's many uh, organised, there's over 100 uh, criminal gangs that are operating, uh, some of which come from uh, countries that you might uh, be mentioning today. And but a lot of these, the techniques and procedures and the tools that they use are known, and organisations can go to bodies, public bodies in the US uh, and in their local countries, where they can identify the kind of uh, activities that they need to watch out for and then make sure that they, they've got defences in place to protect their organisations and their assets against those um, sort of scenarios. Is there a risk, Ross, of putting your eye only on one ball and focusing on, on Russia and the potential for attacks there and opening up doors to other bad actors? Yes, I think that this is a real concern for the industry that we have we run from headline to headline, and this is this is really just a headline. We talk about is there a sort of cyber war coming? We've been in a cyber war for a number of years now, and we're seeing millions of attacks on a daily basis all over the world. But a lot of it's driven by organised criminals. There's there's money at stake here, and where there's money, there's crime. And so these headlines that that grab our attention, we start focusing on one country or the other. That's that's actually a distraction. Organisations need to, rather than look outward, they need to look inward. They need to look at how their infrastructure is uh, being developed, how they're managing it, how they're responding to incidents and ensuring that, as I said, that they're identifying gaps in their protection and they're solving those issues without worrying about who the actor's going to be, because there's, there's many actors, and it doesn't matter what country, we're seeing an onslaught of cybercrime on a you know, sort of an hourly basis. And if I'm an individual as well, not just you know someone who's the leader of a company or an organization, how great is the risk to individuals versus broader infrastructure, power grids, uh, companies at a larger scale? Well, critical national infrastructure is obviously the key focus, but in terms of individuals, especially when they're working in those environments, making sure that they're not sharing the information between their work life and their personal life. Don't don't use the same passwords, you know, keep your emails separate so that you don't have a situation where if you're compromised at home, which is a lot easier to do than compromising an organisation, that you're do what you use to uh, sort of authenticate at home your password and so forth uh, can be used then to go after the, the organisation that you work at. And then I think it's important for uh, employees and uh, members of uh, institutions to make sure that the organisations they represent are taking appropriate steps, not just to secure their customer data, but the personal uh, data of the individual, the employees themselves as well. Yeah, I, I'm recalling from last month, Apple and Meta disclosing that they had been hacked because hackers literally emailed people and pretended to be authorities saying that we need all of this information. How much of the vulnerability is on sheer human error versus more systemic issues with cyber infrastructure? Well, in terms of Horizon's uh, data breach and investigation report of 2021, 85% of uh, 
sort of breaches was related to human error or some human mistake that uh, had uh, changed the system that allowed hackers to get in or provided information that allowed the hackers to use that information. So human is, is the biggest defense, but it's also our biggest weakness. Ah, that's really encouraging to hear. Um, I, finally, last question. We've talked a lot about defense, the need to bulk up defense, kind of uh, diminish vulnerabilities. What about on offense? What can be done offensively versus defensively? Yeah, that's an interesting question, Kaylee. And I think in the, in the industry, many years ago, we were really focused on sort of being proactive, adding those defences because we didn't have them. And then we added sort of our reactive uh, approach, which is the incident management side, should those defences be sort of uh, got through. But I think we've missed a step in the industry, and it's actually looking at the infrastructure through the eyes of the actors and then using their behaviour to test our environments to test our defences so that we actually ensure those investments that we made initially are working in the way that they should, but more importantly, that we don't have to use that reactive incident management because our defences are actually solid. So I think that's the missing step in the industry that organisations are really starting to focus on now and really address. All right, really interesting stuff and an important conversation to have. Ross Brewer of Attack IQ, thank you so much for joining me. Well, with me now here in the studio is Ross Brewer, who's a leading security commentator. So many different companies. This is so huge, isn't it? How on earth did it spread so quickly? Well, it spread quickly because organisations have spent too much on defence and protection, thinking that these hackers aren't going to get into their networks. And clearly it's very easy to bypass the security controls and get inside and propagate from there. OK, but we keep hearing about how it's outdated systems that are being used that's the problem. Do you not agree with that? Well, that's partly in this instance, but there's, there's many vulnerabilities and there's a lot of different types of malware, there's different types of attacks. So are they uh, sort of searching around for companies that are vulnerable to attack? Is that what's happening? Yes, constantly. They compromise companies and then they use their machines that then scans for vulnerable systems. How long do you see this going on for this particular incident? Now, obviously, people all around the world right now are trying to work it out. Well, I think it's interesting if you look at a uh, UK politician being on TV saying the problem's over. Uh, I haven't seen a hacking group yet that sort of watched that and go, OK, time to pack up our bat and ball and go home and we, we can't do any more here. They've got the capability, they've got the tools, they've got the access now, and they'll just change the vulnerability and move on to a different uh, path. And so this is just the beginning, I think, of things to come. And we see this on an ongoing basis, and I don't think this is over yet. Flights to and from its two main London hubs, Heathrow and Gatwick, are currently cancelled. British Airways saying it believes a power supply issue was the cause of the global IT failure. Um, well, with me now, I've got uh, Ross Brewer. Ross, here we are again. What is it, two weeks since we were discussing another IT failure? What do you make of this one? Well, I think it's a wake-up call for the uh, executives uh, of all um, organisations that are running critical national infrastructure. Uh, because whether it's a, you know, the WannaCry that you and I were talking about yeah. two weeks ago or, a, uh, in this case, a power failure, uh, it just shows how reliant we've become on these technologies. So when you said it's a wake-up call for these CEOs of these companies that are so heavily reliant on systems that are so extensive and heavily reliant on the cloud and the internet, what do you mean by a wake-up call? What needs to be done? Are we just talking money and investment here? Well, I think, there, I think there has been an underinvestment in, in most uh, critical national infrastructure organisations, government departments across the piece. Very briefly, Ross, we're running out of time. How long would it take to get this IT system up and going again? Is it a big problem to fix? Well, clearly it's been all day. However, I would, I would suggest that organisations need to gain much better visibility over their IT infrastructure. They should better identify problems very quickly with today's modern technology. Okay. Ross Brewer, thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to BBC News. Companies across the world are reporting they've been hit by a major ransomware cyber attack with British firms among those to confirm their IT systems have been targeted. And the British firms Reckitt Benkiser, who manufacture Neurofen and Dettol, among other products, and the ad agency WPP confirmed their IT systems had also been affected and that they're working to contain the virus. Well, with me is a Ross Brewer, who's a cyber analyst. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Um, is this the same kind of attack that we saw against the NHS and other um, areas um, around the world um, a few weeks ago? Yes, there's been a, just a sort of an upgrade, if you will, of what was used in WannaCry 
and they've just changed some of the uh, techniques that they've used to make it sort of spread faster, uh, make it m much more impactful and, uh, and you know, sort of much more dangerous in terms of its outcome. Well, we saw um, as regards the NHS and, and that previous cyber attack uh, a few weeks ago, the suggestion was that Patch's security software hadn't been downloaded and could have been downloaded. Um, uh, is that potentially part of the problem here for some of these companies? It, it, is, it is the same problem because it's using some of the same exploits. Mm -hmm. uh, however, what uh, everyone has to appreciate is that a lot of the critical national infrastructure, a lot of the NHS, uh, a lot of the manufacturing, you've saw you've listed a number of manufacturing organisations, they're using legacy systems that uh, are not easily patched or can't be patched, right. or they're not taking appropriate sort of protection uh, steps to protect those systems that they know that can't be patched and are vulnerable to these kind of attacks. I think this is something that the UK government needs to play, pay very close attention to at the moment. And I know their woes over the last few weeks have been uh, quite intense, but this is yet another sort of result of the austerity measures and underinvestment in infrastructure. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, you think the last few years um, of austerity, and not just for the national government, but perhaps for companies and, and others sort of worried about their bottom line during the recession, you know, haven't been investing enough in uh, new technology to, to provide the kind of safeguards and security that they should have to deal with these kinds of attacks. Exactly. And if you look at the turmoil within the government in terms of investment in the private sector, if the government's not investing and there's uncertainty over Brexit and these big companies, are they going to make those investments? And the reality is over the last decade, everybody's tightened up their purse strings uh, and there's been a massive underinvestment uh, in IT infrastructure. Meanwhile, the threats are, are getting stronger. The organised criminals are getting much better at what they're doing, but there's a, there's a, there's a gap and the gap is widening. Rapidly. Yeah, so that gap has got, got to narrow. Spending has got to be, you know, put into the kind of measures that can stop this kind of thing. Yes, and, and organisations also need to sort of move from this idea that they can stop these attacks because they can't, it's clear. And they really need to move to recognising that these organised criminals are going to get in their network and they're going to look for the behaviour. Got to stay one step ahead. Okay, Ross, it's good to see you.